Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello again, my friend. Thank you for joining me on the broadcast. My Bible is once again open to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. We want to talk today about the trauma of losing a leader, the trauma of losing a leader. Acts chapter 20. You know, leaders are indispensable to all units of people. Anytime you find a smaller or even a large group of people, you're going to have some, uh, that are, these people that are somehow connected, you will find a leader. Good leaders, though, are, are not easy, but they're rather hard to come by. Whether we're talking about a nation or a state or a county or a city, a business, a church, a home, a Bible study, whatever it is, good leaders just don't grow on trees. By that, I mean they do not exist in abundance. But when a group has had a good leader and they lose them, we are not surprised then when that group is thrown for, into a state of trauma. Why is it hard to lose a good leader? We want to talk about that today here from the book of Acts in chapter 20. We have been nudging all this week along. If you are a person who already does use gospel tracts, that we would like to put into your hand a sample pack out of our tracts and also say to you that uh, with this time of year, it is not too soon. It is the correct time. If you're a person who likes to order tracks to have them for their Christmas cards to put in there and so on, this is the time that we want to nudge you to order tracks. In case you're new to the broadcast, Bible Tract Echoes is the radio side of Bible Tracks Incorporated. We've been doing radio since 1957, but we've been doing gospel tracts since 1938. We've published gospel tracts in different languages and send them out all over the world free of charge. And with that being said, let us put into your hand gospel tracts and especially tracts to use at Christmas time. If you uh, would like to get tracks, a sample packet or Christmas tracks, if you could just uh, uh, do one of the three methods of contacting us. Number one, wait till the end of the broadcast and our announcer will give you the mailing address. But that's all he'll give to you. I'm about ready to give to you the telephone number and also the way to use your computer to get a hold of us. Any of those ways work very, very well. If you would like to telephone us, you can call us here at area code 309-828-6888. One more time, that telephone number is area code 309-828-6888. Or you can just take the name of our ministry, Bible Tracks Inc. Inc. is short for Incorporated, and use that as the core of both our email and our, and our website address. Our email is Bible Tracks Inc. at Juno.com. Our website address is BibleTracksInc.org. All right. BibleTracksInc at Juno.com is our email. And then BibleTracksInc.org is the website address. All right. Yesterday's broadcast, if you were listening, was a unique one. I have uh, taken a, a, a little time away from our study in Matthew for these two days, yesterday and today, because yesterday was my dad's birthday. He was 92 years old. And I said that I will, should the Lord tarry his coming and my dad go through the veil of death, I will be speaking at my dad's funeral. My message will come from Acts 20, verses 28 to 38. My dad already knows that. The Apostle Paul in this passage is saying farewell to church leaders. Uh, these church leaders are from the town of Ephesus. He will see them no more after this event. Uh, Paul has served these men, this church, well. He has been their leader. Paul founded the church there and, and probably led many of these men who are now pastors, probably led them to Christ. Uh, Paul has instructed them. He's loved them. He's written to them. He has been their apostle. The, uh, the brother Paul has been uh, going to them, ministering to them, but they will never see him again. That's why at the end of this passage, there's great weeping that's going on. Now, that being said, the day will come when my dad, 
who has been far more than a dad to me, will have to leave this earth due to death. In many ways, uh, the effect and the impact that Paul has had on these pastors, my dad has had that same impact upon me. It will be a grievously sore day for me and my five sisters when my dad is taken from us and ushered into glory. We will weep with great tears, but not tears of hopelessness. There is not the shred of the shadow of doubt that for my dad to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. My mom was already in heaven, but trust me, I know the heartbeat of my dad. The first person he wants to see in heaven will not be my mother, will not be the apostle Paul, will not be his dad, great man of God that he was. He'll want to see Jesus first of all. And that's the way it ought to to be. Now, yesterday I shared seven ways in which the verses before us here in Acts 20 uh, serve to fit my dad. Today, I want you to hear the voice I hear. You see, I hear, as I read this passage, I hear in my heart my dad's voice. I will read the verses, but for me, I will hear them as if they're being read to me by my dad. Uh, my, I'm going to read these, and my dad, it's almost like my dad is giving me my own personal pep talk and challenge. Now, let me ask, who has been the, that significant spiritual leader in your life? Can you hear their voice in your head? Uh, do you remember their tones and inflections? Uh, if you have, have you recently thanked God for them? Well, let me read the passage, beginning at verse 20, Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer, and feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For this, uh, for I know this, that after my departing, talk about his death here, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, and not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver, nor gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands, he's talking about his own physical hands, have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let me just stop right there. We want to, as I said, I cannot hear, read that passage without hearing my dad's voice in my head. But more importantly, I need to hear the voice of God and so do you. What are the responsibilities of spiritual leaders. Well, why is it hard then to lose a good leader? Let me just share with you three things. Number one, good leaders give wise admonition. Let me say that again. Good leaders give wise admonition. This is not just for pastors, or uh, but it applies to, to dads and moms, leaders in the home. If you're a business owner, and frankly, if you're an unsaved business owner, you need to give wise admonition to those that serve and work for you. But good leaders give wide admonition. Uh, wise admonitions. That's what he's doing in verse 28. They challenge us. Uh, they look us square dead in the eye and they tell us the truth. They care enough to be forthright with us. Paul says here that the, he admonishes them to take heed to themselves and to the saints that they serve, those people underneath their leadership. Good leaders admonish us Take care of yourself and your heart, your mind, and so on, especially if you're a Christian leader. Take care of yourself, your heart, and your soul. But then also take care uh, and take heed to the saints or the people that are underneath your leadership. Daddy, you have a wife and kiddos. I have grandbabies. They're under my leadership. Now, I'm not the same leadership for my grandchildren as I have for my children. And even those that are out of the house, I have to admonish them and care for them. They're under my leadership. I need to take wise and give them wise admonitions. Watch out for yourselves, your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, strength with God, even your physical strength. And then remind my son who's married and has our grandbabies, watch out for those babies. Babies, live godly in Christ Jesus, and so on. Good leaders give wise admonition. That's verse 28. Secondly, good leaders give warning admonitions. Verses 29 to 31 
gives the warning admonitions that the Apostle Paul, good leaders, they care about truth. They care about the unity of the people underneath them. They care about the, the health and well-being of the unit that they are leading. They know those things uh, that are necessary uh, to keep uh, this unit healthy, and they want to ensure that this unit continues strong. Paul says this in, in verse 29, that he says there is going to become trouble from without. Verse 29 says this, for this, uh, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. He's certainly not talking about real, actual wolves. He's talking about people that will come in from the outside into this group, this unit that he has been a leader over, and they're going to try to do it harm. But not only does he say that trouble can come from without, but he says in verses 20, uh, verses 30 and 31, trouble can come from within, from out of your own selves. The, frankly, the goal is to get that unit, these people that are coming in from without and people coming from within, these people who are coming to damage the group, their goal is to get this unit to follow them rather than to follow Christ. Paul told people, follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. The goal of Paul was to get people to look unto Jesus. Frankly, that was, that's been my dad's admonition to me and, and the others of, of our, within our family unit, my five uh, other brothers, sisters, and so on. You remember the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Look Full in His Wonderful Face? Well, that very impetus has been the heartbeat of the Apostle Paul and the heartbeat of my dad. Good leaders give warning admonitions about those who would try to tear up, stir up, and turn people in the unit away from turning and looking to Christ to look at other people. Oh, what a wise uh, warning given to us here. Thirdly, good leaders give welfare admonitions. Now, by welfare, I mean they're going to give advice on how to give direction here. They're going to give advice that provides direction on how to be safe. Verse 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. We talked about that verse yesterday. The Apostle Paul in verses 32 and 33 and through 35 and so on, he says, trust the person of God. He says in verse 32, trust the word of his grace. In verse 33, he says, trust leaders who are without greed. And lastly, he says, trust leaders who work to give and meet the needs of others. Why? These leaders pay, uh, these, if a leader who work this way, they will earn huge dividend for them. Now listen, people are worth serving. If we get anything out of this passage, people are worth serving. Why does Paul think people are worth serving? I think the answer is here at the end of verse 28, because the people that they have been serving have been purchased with the, with the blood of Jesus Christ. My friend, people are valuable to God. If you're listening to me right now and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have great value to God, so valuable that God gave His only begotten Son to die in your place as your substitute to give his life as the payment for the sin that you've committed that you through him could be saved. Oh, believe on Christ today. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.